Next up we have the render sitting right here. Now a couple of these are very large scale filters, surprisingly enough. The lens flare and lighting effects, but especially lighting effects, very complex filter. So we'll come back down to that in just a minute. We'll start off with clouds. What clouds does is it creates a kind of a cloudy pattern, as you can see here, based upon the content of the image. You can get kind of a sense in here the triangular shape of the ship right there. Now this is a nice technique to use as a basis for other techniques, for other filters and so forth. Or if you just want to make clouds, you can use this as a cloud effect as well. Just, just colorize this and give it a light blue color. And you make, make an actual cloud pattern out of that. Let me just demonstrate that quickly here. Image adjustments. Let's go to hue and saturation. Colorize this. Let's pull our hue over here to some blues. Increase the lightness and right in there, so there's a little more saturation maybe. And there we go, some nice clouds to use in a cloud setting. Just one of the possible uses for this. Some of the other filters will be able to use a base filter as a, a bump map or bit map as part of the filtering effect. And you can use this to create that as well. So it has a lot of potential very interesting special effects uses, just a technique to get that. Difference clouds uses kind of a combination. It uses a combination of that cloudy effect, that cloud effect, and then it uses that effect to apply onto the image with a negative. So it gives you a negative where the clouds are and less of a negative where the clouds aren't. As you can see here, notice we have actual color in there and then negative color around that. So it gives a, a difference based upon the density of that cloud and uses the cloud density to apply the negative effect. Let's just undo that one. Fibers is similar to the clouds, except in this case it creates kind of a fibery structure. Again, this is just grabbing pixels in the image to create the fibery structure. You can adjust the variance in here. A little more it gets a lot rougher. A little less it gets a lot smoother. You can increase the strength or decrease the strength in here. Or you can just randomize. Just click through randomize and get some randomization in that setting. Notice how these are all using this variance and strength setting. If I increase my variance in randomize, it all stays in that range. Now this one is really useful if you need to make a wood pattern or a wood look. I'll just use this one, choose OK. There we go. Let's go back to our, actually up to the images here and adjustments. Back to that hue and saturation again. Let's colorize this and let's find a nice brown tone in there somewhere. Pull the lightness down a little bit, a little more saturation and all of a sudden we have real nice wood grain effect. So it's a great one to use to create kind of a wood grain. And depending upon your settings in the hue saturation and your settings over in the fiber filter, you can get a whole range of different wood effects using that particular filter. Just one option, one use of that fibers filter. Okay, coming down here to the little more fancy ones. The lens flare allows you to put actual flare. Let's say I have a little spot here. I want to have a flare happening on the top of this. Maybe right down here, someplace in here. Choose OK. Applies a flare, almost as if there's something reflective right there that's getting glinted off of in the lens. Let's just undo that lens flare. And let's look at the options on that. So a few options. You can adjust the brightness. Actually blow it up if you want to just like that. 35 prime, you can say a little, a little better, a little more lines coming out of the 35 prime. 105 prime, there you go. And a movie prime has these big streaky things coming out of it. So it allows you to place this lens flare as if there's something reflective on the image. If you have something reflective already on the image, you can use this to accentuate that reflectivity. Now, something else you can use that for, you can use it as a special effect. Let me just demonstrate this one. Let's just make a new file here. 
default Photoshop size, that's fine. I'm going to set up a gradient here, black to a dark blue. Choose our gradient tool. I'll just pull that across like this. This is kind of black to dark blue in the background. We can use this to apply that filter and then really see that lens flare effect. A great way to give yourself instantaneous science fiction images. You can add in more of these if you want to. I'm going to choose a, a different one here. And I'll put this one up here someplace. Choose OK. There's a second one. And let's put in a third. Little movie prime. I'll put this kind of kind of doubling up that one in there. There we go. Real fast science fiction background. Real easy to do. Again, just do a gradient and drop in your lens flares. Okay, going back here to our ship. Let's look at the next one of our options. I'm going to step backwards. Actually, that's okay. I'll leave that as is. Go back to our filters and the final one, the lighting effects. Now this is a fascinating filter, very complex, a lot that can be done with this. This gives the effect of having a printed piece of paper on a desk and then you're shining lights onto it. Let's just leave it at the defaults right there. You see it looks as if there's a, this is just sitting on a desk in a dark room and a flashlight is shining on it, just like that. That's what that tool does. And let's just undo that lighting effects. Go back to the filter again. You also can use the lighting effects filter very successfully on 3D shapes, 3D objects. Lots of options in here. We have light type, that's up here. You can adjust the intensity of the light, the focus, either a narrow focus or a bright focus. Properties, is it on a glossy material, you know, a shiny surface or a matte surface? Is the material more metallic or more plasticky? Metallic tends to keep more contrast. Is the exposure overexposure or underexposure? Ambient light, more ambient light, less ambient light. That's ambient light is, is light in the room. It's the out background area. You can control the direction of the light right here. Just grab the handles and actually pull the light around. Wherever you put it, that's where the light is hitting. So I can put it just outside here. It's hitting just outside. You can broaden the beam by pulling these side handles out like that, make it a broader beam or pull it in. You can change the point it's, point it's focusing at by pulling this around. So you can use this to come in and actually control where the light's hitting. You can place in more than one light if you want to. Click on this button and bring a new light in right there. There's a new light. I'll do the same thing. I'm going to stretch this one out a little bit. Spin that around. There we go. So a little bit of light coming in there on the left hand side. There it is. Begin to see that. And these two control points in here allow you to control which light you're working with. Let's just take a fast look at this one. There we go. A couple of lights then hitting this picture. Makes for a rather interesting image actually. And let's undo that lighting effects. Let's go back to the lighting effects again. And there are a lot of standards in here. Notice that it has retained the lighting effect that I just did, so it retains your last option. You can work with different channels if you want to, the red, the green, or the blue channel. So you can limit it to a channel. You can preview or not right here to see what the effect is. You can remove a light, just click on the light, click the trash can. Let me just drag it down to the trash can. There we go and remove a light from it. And then there are some different styles up here and different kinds of lights. First off, there's a directional light. Omni light goes right to the center. As you can see there, if I pull these control handles out, it just increases the size of that light. And then a spotlight, which you've already seen. And then different styles. Two o'clock spotlight with a light yellow color in here and then a yellow material. Actually, you can change the, the color of the material and colorize the material. To change the color, click on that color box and choose a new color from the color dialog box. Here's a blue Omni light. Crossing lights are crossing up, just like that. 
lights crossing down from the top, kind of like our demonstration a little earlier. Here's the fault setting. Five lights shining down, almost like you're looking on a stage with stage lighting. Five lights shining up. Flashlight effect. Floodlight effect. Parallel directional lighting. Red, green, and blue lights coming in. Soft direct light. And of course, any of these things, there's a soft omni light, any of these can be adjusted once it's on here just by grabbing the controls and adjusting the controls just like that. Soft spotlight, three lights coming down, and then a triple spotlight. So lots and lots of possibilities in here. There's that triple spotlight effect. Lots of possibilities in here using this lighting control. You can use it to fake lights coming off of something if you wanted to. I can put a big flying saucer up here, for instance, have lights coming off of a flying saucer. These could be lights on a wall, maybe lighting up a poster. If you had a picture of a poster on a wall, you could use this to add lights onto that wall to be illuminating the poster. Let's just undo that and look at that option quickly. So using these same tools, I'm going to pull this light up a little bit and spin that around just a touch and widen up a little bit. There we go. And the center one, pull this one out of the way. I'm just going to pull this up and widen this up a little bit. And then grab this light. Let's spin this one around. Pull that up a little bit. Then grab that control handle. There it is. And choose OK. And that gives the effect of this being on a wall. And I have lights shining onto the wall right here, lighting up the image. So different ways of using the lighting effects. Again, a rather complex tool. And I recommend spending some time with this one and learning how to use the lighting effects. You can do a lot with an image to add a lot of dr dramatic content to an image just by using this lighting effects. So there you go. That's the render set of filters.